Sarah Todd covers the 76ers, Philly.com, The Inquirer, Daily News. She formerly uh, covered the Golden State Warriors. Uh, she had some interesting tweets that I found to be maybe, uh, I would say, the most compelling and damning if you are the 76ers organization and reading these, yeah. even if he has proved to be 100% innocent, and allegedly this is all out there, of course, I don't know how they get past this. Sarah, welcome aboard. How are you? Um, I'm tired, but I'm still going. How are you guys? <laughs> Tired like all of us from, well, I'm assuming just every time you turn your head, you probably have a text, a call, or something that is leading you down another hole, a rabbit hole, or something to that, uh, you know, that a new information keeps, continues to come. Yeah, and I mean, even last night, you know, I the second night in a row going to bed very late, but I was scared to go to sleep because, <laughs> number one, I didn't want to miss something, and then even with an alarm for early this morning, I would wake up every time my no my phone made a noise for an email because I thought this could be the one. So it was, it was restless. <laughs> uh, absolutely. And now in your history, you know, you cover the Warriors, you know, so you're out West Coast. Now you're on the East Coast. You probably have NBA people that you've talked to everywhere in between. You tweeted that you had NBA players tell you that he doesn't think there's any way Colangelo survives this quote. I wouldn't want him to be my GM. And then you said to clarify, I asked multiple players if it turned out Colangelo, his wife, or anyone in his circle, would you trust him? The answer was no. Was that unanimously no? Uh, from the players, I talked to a large handful of players yesterday, and from all of the players that I talked to, it was unanimous. Everyone, no, they would they would not want to be on a team that he was in charge of. Right. I talked to an agent yesterday also, and he had a different take. His take was, this is all going to come down to money. You know, if you're talking about the Sixers acquiring someone in free agency, if they've got the money to give to them, that's the biggest selling point. Mm. And so who who cares what someone's tweeting out? But, you know, that's an agent's perspective. From the player's perspective, you know, I I asked one guy, I said, okay, what if it's, Definitely not Brian Colangelo, but it happens to be someone close to him, someone in his camp, someone in his family, something like that. And he told me, it doesn't matter. If he's letting that information get out there and then someone in his camp is blasting people on Twitter, I don't want to deal with that. You can't trust him in either scenario. Uh, Sarah Todd is with us at NBA Sarah. You tweeted that NBA players are telling you that even if nothing is 100% proven, and we only have the original report, they would still not c trust Colangelo. So it almost sounds like he is in a no-win situation, at least in the NBA players' community. Right. I had a, For the players that I talked to uh, yesterday, I had like a set series of questions that I asked them, and the first one that I asked them yesterday was, okay, if, if you don't know anything else, if you don't know that, you know, three of the burner accounts are linked by a phone number and that's proven to be someone else. If none of that involved, just what you read in the original report by Ben D uh, Dietrich, what, what are your thoughts? And it's like, I can't trust the guy. That's my thought. Um, at, with the information that you have gotten with the players and, and agents and uh, people that you've talked to, I'm assuming the Sixers have probably, in part of their investigation, have at least – heard similar things is there any way that even if he is a hundred percent absolved of all this that the Sixers can move on and be business as usual uh I find that to be a very slim possibility I think you know the only way that I think Colangelo could survive this and that the Sixers could move on a, a little bit seamlessly would be if this turns out to actually be a long con from somebody completely unrelated to the Colangelo camp. Let and me, that, go that, ahead, go ahead. Perfect. Well, let me ask you this, really because perfect. you came here, to my knowledge anyway, after Colangelo was hired, correct? Yes. So... Would, do you surmise in your dealings with him and not really being here in the previous regime that this is a jealousy act or somebody out to get him based on how you know Brian? 
I, it, one of the things that stood out when reading through some of the tweets from the burner accounts is it doesn't really seem like, uh, like just the, the language and the wording doesn't seem like Lancelot. At the same time, though, I think a lot of people who have uh, Twitter or public personas, you know, when, when someone's coming at you, you could do a lot of things that might look stupid in hindsight. Everybody does things that look stupid in hindsight and are out of character. So uh, I, I just really don't know. I mean, I just like have been laughing so much, laughing <laughs> to the point of craziness over the last couple of days because it's such a bizarre situation. This really could end up going a million different directions, but right now it's pointing really heavily at Brian or at least someone that he's close to. Spending a few minutes with Sarah Todd, Philly.com, Sixers beat reporter. You're laughing, Sarah. The league is laughing, and I, I did see Sarah. I mean, how many times when you spoke to people around the league or different players or agents uh, or, or people in front office that were like, glad it's not us. That guy, you know, I mean, almost comical to like, ooh, that's just nuts, and thank God it's not us. Yeah, I talked to one person um, uh, that works in a, for a Western Conference team in the front office, and it was – just laughter and they said this is hysterical but god i'm glad it's not our team like it's (laughs) around the league just in general they're looking over at the sixers thinking like man they they really can't catch a break with stuff like this can they (laughs) so sarah what do you make of the Embiid tweets then and his relationship maybe with brian colangelo well i mean i think that the you know it's the tweet that Embiid put out that was saying, you know, Sam Hinkie's better and smarter than you, and he was adding one of the burner accounts. Uh, That's not the first time that Embiid has taken up with, like, a burner account scandal. When Kevin Durant's uh, burner account was revealed last year, he tweeted at uh, that account, the fake one, and, you know, he he said, uh, Joel Embiid is better than Michael Jordan, uh, hashtag burner account. So, it could be taken both, one, he was really pissed off, or it could be taken, two, he was just having fun. And then he had the comments later on that night that said, you know, I'm just joking, I don't believe it. And that's probably the right, that's probably the the most politically correct stance to take is, okay, this is my GM currently uh, in the moment, and I'll consider him innocent until proven guilty. But, you know... He's got a lot. His voice has a lot of weight with the Sixers. So you got to imagine if at any point he says, "I don't trust this guy," then Colangelo is gone. Are you familiar with Joel and Brian's relationship and what kind of relationship they have? Because we know Joel I mean, seemed to like Sam. Yeah, and um, and I think that's that's generally what I know about the relationship is that he he likes Hinky, but I don't think that I've known of anything that's been that would have anything to do with this particular situation that would have any weight or bearing on whether or not anything else in the future happens. Now, how do you read into him texting? This is Colangelo texting Jordan Schultz saying that he was set up. It's not him. Someone's out to get me. This is obviously not me. Well, how do you read into that? I, on the surface, I, I don't put any stock in it because I think, you know, any guy that's backed into a corner is going to, swing a little bit but and so on the surface eh, I don't really care about it but if it turns out that he absolutely knew that something was happening then that's gonna look really bad yeah uh what did you make uh, Sarah Todd's with us uh Philadelphia Inquirer Philly.com at NBA Sarah on Twitter um and she's got some really interesting tweets from people that she spoke to regarding the situation um what did you make of the Sixers press release We'll get into today's press release in a minute, but today, uh, yesterday, it was very terse, quick, and did not make any mention of him at all. Yeah. Um, also, I think that the ringer should have. I think they deserved a little bit more recognition in the press release. There was a uh, no name mention. They said like a report, and it was you know it's not like multiple reports. It was just one one guy, Ben Dietrich. He deserved a little bit of a shout out, but. Uh, yeah, that it was just a small, short paragraph saying, you know, we're going to independently investigate this. I don't think anybody really understands what that means, but we'll see what happens. 
Um, and then today, there is a press release that just came out about an hour ago uh, announcing the extension yeah. of Brett Brown, which is the first quote you see in there come from Brian Colangelo. Do you find that stunning, shocking, uh, business as usual, not all that surprising? Uh, they probably could have afforded themselves a couple of days and waited uh, so that they didn't have to include uh, the Colangelo quote. At the, at the same time, Colangelo is the guy that wanted to keep Brett on, and he said it before any of this happened, you know, during the exit interviews, he said, you know, we're looking to keep him around. He deserves a go at this team now that everyone's healthy and they have a chance. Um, so the fact that he made a statement about that, and we don't know, you know, when these quotes were taken. This could have been ready to go the other night before the Ringer report came out. So, uh it is going to look a little weird, though, in a in a few days if if there's a change up in the front office. I know um, there's uh, the five burner accounts. There was some stuff out there about the the wife being involved, uh, the phone numbers matching Nine her. Yep. Uh, there was another thing about him in the um, in the comments section for various sites. Like that discus site that serves Philly dot com. Yeah. Um, is there yeah. Any, is there anything, Sarah? <laughs> I know our brains are all twisting and turning, but is there anything here that makes it feel like he was set up? Um, I mean, I'll believe anything these days. So yeah, <laughs> sure. like, the, like you know, especially like with this team and in this situation, the split among the fans. Like you know, of course, this is all alleged that he's even involved with this as it is, but the fact that. I don't know what drives me crazier as I keep trying to think about this. And, and, and it seems like we both have the lack of sleep that is driving us crazy. But the fact that either he, a president of a team, could have done this, somebody in his circle could have done this, or potentially a deranged fan who was such a hinky supporter that wanted him out that bad that, that, that did this. I don't know which one I want to end up happening more. Yeah, I think the, a couple of the things that stand out that make that seem improbable are the very, very specific and tightly connected people that were followed by these burner accounts. And then on the flip side of that, those people who are known to be friends or business partners or uh, people involved with uh, Brian's son's basketball team or his high school basketball teammates, uh, very specific people, they have they had also followed back to these burner accounts. So, like, why would a random person in Phoenix or involved with the University of Basketball or the University of Chicago Basketball, why would they follow back some rando Twitter account? I don't know. There's just, like, so many things that if this is some deranged person, this is going to be one of those the most intensely convoluted and masterfully uh, finished hoaxes in all of history. Sarah, when you read the original Ringer report, what was the most damning piece of evidence for you? Was it the fact that the accounts all went dark that fast, the minute that only one person was contacted about them or told about them, and that was Brian Colangelo? Absolutely. But I think... Just overwhelmingly for most people who read that, that was the piece that stand, that stood out the most. You know, if you if you call them and you only mention two, the other three go dark immediately. And then you ask them, did you tell anyone else? And they say no. That is pretty significant. Uh, here's something like, okay, so the Sixers have obviously had a lot of stuff that has happened since, you know, you go back to Collins and Thorne. And then Hinky comes in, and then the league kind of introduces the Colangelos to the Sixers. The Sixers then have kind of dual general managers. Hinky then puts out a manifesto. He steps aside. They hire Brian Colangelo. So there's been a lot of bonkers stuff that was uh, that that led to to this point. But do you feel that the NBA will end up with some egg on its face because essentially people feel that they put this together. They put the Colangelos in here. Yeah, I, it's definitely going to be the perception from everybody outside of the situation that, you know, because this, this was 
for more for better like in more or less words it was orchestrated by silver so and that's what people around the league believe correct right and that's it's hard to imagine that you know people outside the Sixers situation are going to be thinking anything other than that uh whether that calls for a response from the league i doubt it very much because not a lot of you know the heads of any sort of a a league are not going to really have to be accountable for too much and i don't think a a twitter hoax is going to be one that they really have to deal with on that level (laughs) i think this is really going to be dealt with at the sixers level now you tweeted uh yesterday that you have no idea how to prove or disprove but you're sure that's exactly what a lot of organization play, but you're sure of uh, what organization players, et cetera, are thinking right now. Was there, you said almost unanimously or virtually and not unanimously, everybody said no, but was was there, <laughs> did almost everybody like almost uh, laugh or think like, I can't believe this is happening in our league right now with the NBA finals happening, that this has essentially trumped the beginning of the finals because you know, talking to people earlier about the NBA Finals, they said this is all anybody's talking about out there. Yeah, it's. I mean, this is definitely the biggest sports story happening right now, which is crazy because we are literally hours away from the NBA starting. But to your point, you know, everybody that I talked to, it was a strange story to be reporting because when I, you know, I'm talking to players, I'm not usually sharing the exact same sentiments that they are, you know, but Mm -hmm. we're both saying to each other, oh, my God, this is crazy. I can't believe I'm saying these words. And they'd answer to me, be like, I know, I can't believe I'm saying this either. (laughs) Uh, Sarah Todd at NBA Sarah, check her out there. And uh, she's got a lot of very uh, interesting tweets regarding people that she's talked to, uh, NBA players, agents, uh, regarding this stories, and then of course uh, Brett Brown gets a three-year extension, and you know you feel for Brett because he's not going to get the press conference probably that he deserves, and and all of this stuff. It's just a bizarre situation. That um, any timeline for you on when we could find anything here? Um, I think it, it's really going to depend on what the Sixers think is the best timing. So I. I think that the league would probably not be happy if anything happened tonight, but that could be good for the Sixers because it could be, you know, at least mixed, if not overshadowed by some game one information. Um, I doubt something would happen on the weekend, so maybe tomorrow, maybe Monday. Who knows? At this point, anything, like I said, anything could happen. (laughs) Your um, intuition would say... Does Brian Colangelo make the Sixers draft pick June 25th? I don't think so. I think a lot of people agree with you. Of course, allegedly, uh, Brian is in some uh, interesting, uh, an interesting place right now. We'll see what the Sixers investigation brings up. Sarah Todd, Philly.com, at NBA Sarah. Hey, thanks for coming on, Sarah. No problem. Thanks for you guys.